This Cessna plane was flying above the Kalahari Desert, and the five people sitting in it were enjoying a memorable journey. On the land, the wildlife and uninhabited desert scenes from the sky can only be seen by a few individuals, but their pleasant trip was quickly turning into the worst reality of their lives. In the middle of the Kalahari, where it is impossible for humans to live, a problem occurred in their plane, and the pilot crash-landed the aircraft. In South Africa, the Kalahari Desert is about 900,000 square kilometers in size, making it the sixth largest desert in the world. Unlike the extremely dry Sahara Desert, the Kalahari isn't as parched. Because of this, around 320 different kinds of wildlife can be found here. Among them are hunting animals like lions, cheetahs, wild dogs, and African elephants, which protect their territory fiercely. Many people from all over the world visit South Africa to witness this diverse wildlife. The Kalahari Desert is so vast that it is shared by three African countries, with Botswana having the largest portion. In the capital city, Gaborone, the executive director of a courier company named Carl Duplessis decided to charter a private plane to take his friends on a 600-kilometer trip to a village called Maun. The purpose of their journey was both for adventure and a business event. Along with Carl, his friends Mike Nyklonik and his wife Lynette Nikolic, as well as Neb Gray Arak and the airplane pilot Costa Marcon Dunados, were also excited to be part of this journey. The airplane they used was a two-engine Cessna 414. After taking off from above the Kalahari, the plane started its journey towards Maun. The journey was supposed to last for two hours, but after just one hour, Lynette, who had been scared from the beginning, noticed an oil leakage from one of the plane's wings. At first, she thought it might be normal, but then she shared her concern with her husband. When pilot Costa was informed about the issue, he decided to turn off the engine from which the oil was leaking, for safety reasons. The pilot reassured everyone that there was no need to worry because the Cessna 414 had another engine left. However, in the African desert, the air was thick and dry due to the hot weather, which made it challenging for the plane to maintain its altitude with just one engine's power. The plane began to slowly descend. In an emergency, the pilot tried to contact Gabron Tower, but unfortunately, the radio had stopped working in the middle of the Kalahari. The only option left to save the plane and their lives was to find a suitable landing spot. The airplane was flying at a low altitude, so the pilot had to look for a suitable landing strip. However, all they could see were small and big mountains, bushes, and nothing else, meaning there was no suitable landing surface in sight. The pilot instructed everyone to assume the brace position, and the plane crash-landed in the bushes. Before the crash landing, they had seen many animals running away as they approached the ground. After some time, when they regained consciousness, they found smoke and fire all around them. Lynette's hand was burned, and Neb Gray Arak might have damaged lungs because he couldn't breathe properly. The others helped Neb and supported him against a tree. Luckily, the remaining three people didn't have serious injuries and managed to handle the situation. However, the plane's fuel caught fire, and there was an explosion, destroying the aircraft. Normally, planes have emergency transponders that send their location to the control tower in case of radio failure. But in this Cessna 414, there was no such transponder, leaving them all shocked. Now, in the vast and uninhabited Kalahari Desert, nobody knew their exact location. They found themselves surrounded by trees without any food or drink, and two people urgently needed to reach a hospital for life-threatening injuries. They held on to hope that a rescue team would come to their aid. However, without knowing their location, it would take many days for a rescue team to find them. As the day came to an end, they decided to use the plane's fire to create a bonfire to stay warm. Throughout the night, they heard the sounds of dangerous animals, but the bonfire seemed to keep the animals from approaching them too closely. The next day began, but there was still no sign of a rescue team in sight, even from far away. All five people were in very bad conditions, and they were suffering from dehydration, making their throats feel dry. In the morning, they tried to drink dew from the leaves, but the dew disappeared as soon as the sun came up, and they could only get a few drops of water. 
Suddenly, they heard the sound of a plane, hoping it was the rescue team coming for them. They looked up at the sky and saw a passenger plane passing above them. They tried to signal for help by creating smoke and shouting, but from that height, the passenger plane couldn't notice them. They felt hopeless, realizing they might die from hunger and thirst, or worse, become prey for the wild animals. Eventually, the executive director, Carl, and the pilot decided to take the risk and search for help in the dangerous desert. They had no other option left. Sadly, they had to leave their injured companions behind. The second day was coming to an end, and Lynette and Neb's conditions were getting worse. The scorching summer sun dehydrated them even more, while Carl and the pilot walked all day in search of water, but found none. On the second night, there was a sudden but short rain, and the injured people from the crash couldn't collect enough water to sustain them. Two days had passed since the plane crash, and Carl and pilot Costa continued walking in the desert, still finding no signs of other humans or a water source. They were worried if they were going in the right direction. Meanwhile, Neb suffered from extreme dehydration and panic attacks due to his damaged lungs, as he had been standing for the past two days. Carl made a decision to venture alone into the desert, and fortunately, he came across rainwater collected in a tree hole. It wasn't much, but it was something they could share to quench their thirst. The third and fourth day passed without much hope, and they felt like they were just waiting for their death. Lynette's injuries attracted insects, and on the other side, Carl and Costa had been walking for four days, miraculously avoiding any dangerous animals in the African desert. Towards the end of the fifth day, Carl and the pilot spotted a hut in the distance, but they hesitated, thinking it might be a mere illusion as they had thought they saw help before. But this time, it was real, a girl was sitting inside the hut. This renewed their hope. They immediately relieved their thirst and used the radio to inform the control tower about everything. However, the rescue team was searching in the wrong area of the Kalahari because they didn't know the exact location of the crash. On the sixth day, in the morning, the three friends at the crash site were almost on the verge of death when they heard the sound of a helicopter. The rescue team had finally found them. The people who survived the plane crash considered the arrival of the rescue team just moments before their potential death as nothing less than a miracle. Carl and Costa's decision to leave their friends behind and seek help had turned out to be the right choice. All the people involved in the incident were saved, except for the pilot in the other plane crash, who tragically lost his life two years later, 